Welcome to the latest USL League One in 10. My name is Jason Longshore. Thanks for listening here on the SDH Network. Let's recap week five and preview week six, which is already underway in the USL League One. Number one on our list is number one on the league table, South Georgia Tormenta. They retained that top spot with an impressive 2-0 win on the road at FC Tucson last Friday night. Goalkeeper Pablo Hara kept the clean sheet for Tormenta with four saves. Lucas Coutinho opened the scoring for South Georgia in the 63rd minute, ripping a blast with his left foot after Charlie Dennis laid a pass perfectly into his run at the top of the 18. Hara made a critical diving save in the 82nd minute off a header from Tucson forward Roy Abergil, and then Hara pounced on the rebound to deny a follow-up opportunity. Stoppage time late. Tucson sent their goalkeeper, Philip Ejimadu, up on a late corner. Connor Antley breaks away for Tormenta, outruns everybody, and scores into an open net to give Tormenta the 2-0 win. 11 points, South Georgia Tormenta is two points clear at the top of the USL League One standings. Number two on the list is number two in the standings, North Texas SC. They're keeping the pressure on Tormenta. They are a perfect 3-0-0 with nine points after their 1-0 win over Orlando City B last Saturday at Toyota Stadium. A Mateus Silva own goal was all that they needed to earn the three points against the Young Lions. Orlando took 17 shots, but North Texas goalkeeper Carlos Aviles only had to make two saves to keep the clean sheet in the victory. There is one other unbeaten team in USL League One, and they're number three on our list, Toronto FC2. They're leading the pack of teams on seven points at 2-0-1. They went to Lansing last Friday night and ran out of Cooley Law School Stadium, 2 no winners. Luca Petrasso opened the scoring in the 11th minute with a beautiful free kick from out wide on the right. He caught Lansing goalkeeper Michael Kirk by surprise and played it over him into the goal. I think Kirk was expecting a cross. Petrasso was thinking otherwise. Adolfo Ovalle sealed the win with a penalty in the 85th minute for Toronto. Lansing dominated possession at 71%. They took 13 shots, but Caleb Patterson Sewell's three saves for Toronto kept the Ignite off the scoreboard. Toronto, two shots on goal. That's all they needed to win 2-0. Number four on our list, FC Tucson, they had that loss last Friday to Tormenta. They opened week six with a 2-0 home win over Lansing Ignite on Tuesday. That moves them into fourth place in the table and into the final playoff spot in USL League One. The loss continued a rough week for Lansing where they failed to score in their 180 minutes of action. Devin Jamba pounced on a deflected clearance in the 27th minute to open the scoring for Tucson. Devin Vega extended the lead in the 62nd minute. Philip Ejimadu made six saves in the clean sheet victory for Tucson. Lansing again dominated possession. They created more chances than they did at home against Toronto, but they were still unable to crack open the scoring, and it's just a disappointing week for the Lansing Ignite. But FC Tucson, their win puts them into the four spot in the league table. One team to keep an eye on who is outside of the playoff picture right now is our number five item on the list, the Richmond Kickers. They've won back-to-back matches at 1-0, the latest coming last Saturday at City Stadium against the Chattanooga Red Wolves. Joe Gallardo was the hero. He scored the only goal of the match in the 52nd minute. He calmly slotted home a cross on the ground from winger Mutaya Mwape in a crowd at the top of the six-yard box. The kickers were also strong defensively. They only conceded five shots to the Red Wolves, and goalkeeper Akira Fitzgerald was only asked to make one save in the 1-0 win for Richmond. Number six on the list. The match was a scoreless draw, but the spectacle of the week in USL League One was in Wisconsin at Bree Stevens Field in Madison. 
4,462 fans turned out in the snow for forward Madison's home opener against Greenville Triumph. Madison goalkeeper Ryan Coulter made four saves to earn a point for his side. They'll be looking for their first home win this weekend and hopefully not looking to break out the snowplows as Toronto comes to town for an 8 p.m. Eastern time kickoff at Bree Stevens Field. Greenville, not maybe not used to the snow so much, they return to the warmer surroundings of Legacy Early College as North Texas takes their first road trip of the season on Saturday. The Triumph hosting the undefeated North Texas SC side should be a fun one to keep an eye on. You can watch both of those on ESPN Plus this weekend. Number seven on our list, week six in the league continues tonight as Orlando City B looks for their first win in USL League One as they host the Chattanooga Red Wolves. The up and down Red Wolves have struggled to score goals consistently, but they have shown a capability of scoring multiple goals in a match this season. They had two against North Texas in a failed comeback attempt, and they had three in a win against Tormenta. Orlando struggled to find goals period this season, but they have tightened up defensively after a rough start. The match tonight kicks off at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time from Montverde Academy. Number eight on the list, it's been a rough couple of matches for Lansing. We've talked about it. They've dominated possession. They haven't been able to score goals They head to Richmond for a Saturday night matchup against the Kickers. Maybe not the team they want to see right now. We'll find out if the Richmond Kickers can win their third in a row or if Lansing can stop their their recent slide. Against a team in Lansing who's struggling to score goals, Richmond has to feel pretty good right now. They have three clean sheets in their five matches so far this season. The Ignite, they've dominated possession. They've scored some goals up until recently but they're conceding nearly two goals per match, and they're looking for their first clean sheet of the year. Kickoff on Saturday is at 7 o'clock Eastern time from City Stadium in Richmond, Virginia. Number nine on our list is some news for 2020 in USL League One. Earlier this week, the next city to join the league was announced as Omaha, Nebraska. Jay Mims, who's the former head coach of the University of Nebraska Omaha program and more recently was the coach of the U-17s and U-19s with Real Salt Lake's nationally renowned academy, he'll be the club's inaugural manager. Werner Park will be the club's home, and it's undergoing upgrades currently to support the addition of the soccer team to its existing schedule as the home of the Omaha Storm Chasers of the Pacific Coast League and AAA Baseball. The venue opened in 2011. It seats just under 10,000 with some general admission seating on the berm. Keep up with the whole process to determine the club's name, their crest, their colors at omahaprosoccer.com. Final item on the USL League 1 and 10 this week. Yesterday, the league announced the the participating clubs for the inaugural USL Academy Cup. Teams representing 22 USL Championship clubs, three USL League One clubs, and eight USL League Two clubs will participate in the event between the 22nd and 25th of this month in Tampa, Florida. Greenville Triumph, South Georgia Tormenta, and the Chattanooga Red Wolves will be sending teams from USL League One. The Academy Cup is the first part of the process to create an Academy League in USL. The goal of that program, the goal of that league, is to create an optimal environment for player growth and also for club development. It's a big step forward for USL and the championship and League One and League Two and just strengthens those links in the USL pyramid. Excited to see the Academy Cup this season. Excited to see the eventual Academy League and excited to see Week 6 continue in USL League 1. We'll be back next week to recap all of it. We'll see if Tormenta will be on top of the table at the end of the weekend. North Texas SC has a chance to jump them if they take care of business in their first road match of the year. We'll be back next week. Thanks for listening.